Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. So I'm back at this little kitchen refit. Um, this is the one you saw me doing a couple of weeks back where I was using the grinder and everything and some of you are begging me to go and get a wall chaser, which I have now bought. Um, it will be in one of my videos coming up. I just picked up a Milwaukee chaser, so that's now in the van. Um, and it seems like I haven't actually used it yet, but it seems like a good bit of kit. So uh, that'll be coming up in one of the videos soon. Um, and yeah, a lot of you were asking for um, to, to do more sort of updates on jobs as they're happening. So I'm not actually doing anything here today. This is just literally, I was on the way home and I've just literally got the key for it. So I just wanted to run in and just have a quick look um, and see actually how far they've got. So as you can see, they've, they've skimmed it out and it's been, uh, they haven't fully finished painting it yet, but they've just they've put the first couple of coats on, uh, and it looks all right. It's looking a lot better than it was when uh, when I was here last time making all the mess. But it's uh, I think they're waiting for that bit of wall to dry out by the looks of it. Uh, but it's coming together well. So I'll be back in here in a couple of weeks' time, I think. Maybe next week might be. Depends how we get on. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but otherwise, it's all right. Um, the kitchen is all in the other room. It's all been assembled. They've just got to drop it in. Uh, that reminds me, actually. A couple of you were saying about the pipe work on the floor. Isn't that going to get in the way of the kitchen fitters, you know, the kitchen legs and stuff? Um, I, when I put that in, I, I had the spec drawing so I could see what the, the measurements of the units were. So all the boxes on the floor, theoretically, we'll see, they shouldn't actually get in the way of the kitchen fitters. They should just be able to drop the kitchen unit straight in and they won't have to do any alterations. Well, they shouldn't have to if the measurements are correct. So, uh, but I did actually deliberately mark, I did where they are is where they should be, if that makes any sense. So we'll see. Um, I did have another person saying, what happens if there's a flood? Um, I mean, we've had fire, so I suppose that's a fair question. What happens in a flood? Um, I'll be honest with you. Um, if there is a flood in this kitchen, right? I mean, it's, a, it's all the same level here. So if there is a flood, it's gonna fuck the entire house. So, although that said, I can put waterproof gaskets on and stuff, um, and it should be all right. But I mean, I'll be honest, it's not a major, <laughs> it's not something I'm too concerned about. You know, if there is a flood here, and there's a foot of water in this kitchen, there are going to be far bigger issues here than worrying about the junction boxes under the, under the units. Although that does remind me actually, these here, this was the old incoming leg from the kitchen. Um, so that was the reason I put this box here. So this will just have, um, this, this is just going to be on a 20 amp um, ring here. I'm not going to bother putting it on a 32 because I just don't, I'm always a believer if you can put, put, the, put whatever circuit you're working on, keep the fuse as low as you can get away with, but without causing an inconvenience to the user. And more often than not, you know, a 20 amp breaker in a kitchen will actually be more than, you know, it is more than ample. So that was, I'm just going to put some maintenance free connectors in there uh, and that's it. I'll just put a waterproof gasket and a lid on it. Job done. What I will do though is on the, um, in the back of the cupboard, I will just cut a little hole with a blank plate on it. So if they do need to get to it for, I don't know, future testing or whatever, it is there if they need it, but it's unlikely. But I will put that in just for the sake of doing so as, you know, course of practice, so to speak. That was the other thing. Uh, that reminds me, actually. Some of you were talking about, and you were asking, is this the power supply for the cooker? No, it isn't. It's, sorry, the one mil for the hob. It isn't actually powering the hob as such, it's just the ignition for the hob. The original six mil cable is actually here. The, the plaster is plastered over it. The original one is still there, which you'll have to dig out later. So it, they do still have an original six mil here, but I've just run a one mil off a fuse spur for the ignition. So. Um, which then led on to the next question. Some of you were saying, what happens if the customer puts in a 13 amp fuse in the fuse spur? Well, the problem is you can't, you can't dictate what the customer does once you drive away. All I can do is, you know, I've made it the way that it is. It's safe, it works. It's the same as a, a 3036 rewirable fuse board. You can do a job in a house and you can hop in your van and drive off. Um, and when you left it, you know, that six amp rewirable fuse or five amp actually, I think they were, you know, it was a five amp fuse when you left, but there's nothing to stop the customer from coming behind and then putting a 40 amp bit of fuse wire in. You know, you can't, you can't, you can't predict that, you know, all you can do, I will leave a five amp fuse in the fuse spur and that's it. If the customer takes it out and puts a bit of tin foil in there, which is perfectly possible seeing as we're in a kitchen, 
then that's what they do. And that's the same with a 2.5 cable. If they take that, you know, if they take the fuse out and put a, a bolt in there or something, or just, re or, you know, squeeze a bit of tin foil in there, and I've seen that before, but you can't account for that. All you can do is what is acceptable when you're doing your job, you know? But this is the way that I do it. I mean, there's, you know, everyone's got their own, their own way of doing it. And this is just, this is, <laughs> this is the way that I do it, you know? A lot of, some of you are saying, why bother with putting the pipe on the floor? Why not um, just chase all of it into the wall? I personally just prefer to put it in pipe. It just makes it a bit more, it's better than just draping the wires behind the kickboards, which let's face it, you know, how many, we've seen loads of people do that. You know, you come to a job, you take the kickboard off and it's just a, a massive wires behind the kickboard because they couldn't be bothered to install it right. Personally, I just prefer to put it in pipe. It's just a personal preference. Um, that last job I did in Camden, I did the same there you saw on cam. I just, I just did it all in pipe. It's just, I think it's a nice finish. Um, and it's rodent proof. It's a good rodent deterrent. Um, I'm just, just, I don't know, it's just the way that I do it. I, I pipe it and then it makes it, if you do need to alter something or you need to add something in, you know, you've got a little bit of capability here to help do it, you know? So I hope that answers that question. I think that's about it here. There's not a huge amount to discuss here, really. This is just, I'm just keeping you posted just on where I am and what I'm doing. Um, so this is just a little midweek filler. Um, but I will see you on uh, my next video on Monday. So, uh, yeah, be more then. See you later, everybody.